well, I just got through saying the high school's in bad shape, so why would we want to put more kids in there? Well, SBA quoted us a price. This was in a general meeting. This wasn't just something they told me. And it would cost about $28 million to replace Pocahontas County High School. That's what the rate is today. $28 million a lot of money. And when SBA only has $50 million, $55 million a year to put out, they're not going to send <coughs> they're not going to send us $28 million to house four and six <coughs> kids. It's not going to do that. So, what's plan B? <coughs> plan B is, is that they are willing to consider funding 65% of what it would cost to replace the building. I did a little bit of math before I came, and it's $18.2 million. That's the most that they would consider funding for our county, for our high school. Of course, that would include all the updates you need to do, any additions you need to make, especially with CTE and those types of things. If you had a uh, uh, 7 through 12 configuration, obviously you'd have to have an additional gym. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into that. But that's what they would fund. Now that leads us on, okay, if we if we do this, if we even consider it, so we take 7th and 8th grade out of Martin Middle School, we also take 7th and 8th grade out of Green Mountain. And that, that does a couple things for Green Mountain. Now, Green Mountain's got a lot of issues we mentioned uh, also, uh, as far as things that cost so much money to fix, that you're almost better to replace it than to repair it. Because you still, at the end of the day, are going to have a 50-year-old building set there on the foundation. So, you have to consider that part too. Obviously, renovating is cheaper than building new facilities. But with Greenbine, if, if you downsize that school from a pre-K-8 to a pre-K-6, then you've got the options of renovating the building. I know parts of that building is, is, is Still pretty cheap. I think there's one wing or one section that's the problem area as far as the sewer system, and those kind of things go. But then yes, also have to think about the possibility with Green Bank is it might be, and I don't know, it's just me talking. I'm nobody, I'm just that it's just me. But sometimes it might be cheaper. If you're gonna build a, a, a building for a pre-K six, it might be cheaper to build a new building than try to replace one that's pre-K eight that has all these problems. You're gonna be obviously have to take some parts off that building and uh, I don't know how much the upkeep would be to fix all these major issues we have with fire alarms and uh, of course there's no air conditioning up there. I was looking at one quote today that uh, they had seen just very general. They were talking about if we had a school at Martin uh, Middle School I think a rest of it like eight million dollars to do the work on that. Over four million of them was just air conditioning. Over half the cost was air conditioning. So you can see what the cost is to do that. And all of our buildings, you know, we all know, the high school has air conditioning, but the other schools need it. Especially the way you know we have kids going to school. And we all know that they're going to school when it's too hot. That's my big secret to anybody. But there's a huge cost in that. And the SBA is not in the business of fixing buildings. Uh, just doing minor repairs on They don't fund just roofs, for example. I mean, you do what's called a uh, you NIP, know, which is a major improvement uh, project that fund uh, lesser amounts. But for the most part, SBA is interested in two things new buildings, less buildings. That's what they look at. And that they, that's the way that they, they feel about it. Now, <coughs> we talk about Hillsboro. If we have uh, a pre K 6 school there, they have two classrooms right now that's not being used. And so all we'd have to do to that school is have it air conditioning. But now let's talk about another option before I get down to the, to the last part of this. Let's say that with the, with the majority of the people or everybody says, we don't want pre-K-6, we don't want pre-K-6. If we're going to move my parents, just make a pre-K-8. Well, we have a pre-K-8 for everybody, which is your mind, uh, from that school. And there are things that are, there's, a, there's sometimes with problems with pre-K-8 school, not with one he has, it's just you have a lot of configurations, you have a lot of different grade levels in that particular building. So I, I, I have put it me several times, it's like having two schools in one. Okay, if, if that's the if that's the case, if that indeed is the case, then why would we want to make two of them? Now, like I said, I'm not being critical of Green Mike, but I'm just saying if that configuration, pre-K-8, is too big of a configuration, why would we want to do it again? So that's why I think the pre-K-6 is, is a better choice. Now, I think that, that, I don't think there's a lot of people that would just go ballistic over a pre-K-6. The problem is the 7-8 going to the high school. That's the part that I would do. 
And that's why I asked Mr. Lambert at the panel plan how that worked. And, and he, he didn't tell me anything that I didn't already know. They obviously isolate those seventh and eighth grade kids from the rest of the high school students. They, they have a separate room for them, so there's as little interaction as possible, so they're not around those kids. Of course, they ride the bus with them, but our pre -school, preschool kids ride the bus with the high school kids too. So that is an issue. That's something to, to talk about and be concerned about. You have to look at the pluses and minuses and see if it's worth uh, going about it. Now, as I see it, we have three options. We can apply for SBA funds who provide the large majority of the money. In other words, if you send a project to Charleston and they uh, approve the project, then you have to spend the money on that like they tell you. Okay? So they say, well, we'll we approve this project if you do this, if you do that. So that's one option. Now the county would have to come up with some kind of matching fund, but it's not like a 50-50 in any form. I know at Hillsborough when they did the uh, cafeteria, the project was around a million dollars and the county had $59,000 to pay their part of that. So that's like 10% or something. So, so you have that. The other choice you have is well, we don't want SBA to tell us how to spend our money. They, we don't want them to tell us how to arrange our schools or how to configure our schools. So we'll do it ourselves. Well, you can do it yourselves through that nasty four-letter word levy and the other nasty four-letter word bond. There's only two ways that you can pay for big projects in your county without using SBA. Just a little history of SBA. Just give me two minutes to go through this. SBA was, was uh, established by the state legislature years ago. And what they, they are funded by the legislature. The legislature every year gives them X amount of dollars to disperse among the, the school systems in the state. And that money is dispersed through the competition process that I already talked about, through application, presentation, and then they decide on which needs are uh, the ones they want to fund. Well, when we, uh, so we, we met with, when fact, uh, SBA came up and did a little presentation in the board meeting a month ago, two months ago, three months ago. I'm following together in a while. And it was talking about uh, the, the, the different projects that we'd like to try. Because you don't you just use this, uh, send one project, go up three or four projects. It goes back to that CEFP plan I was talking about earlier. But then they'll say, now if you just have one thing on this list, it's like kids at Christmas time. If you had one thing, what is it you want? And they asked me that question, and I said, Martin Elementary School, I was it was my number one priority. And to quote what SBA said in the meeting, it's probably reported somewhere, they think that would be an easy sell to the SBA. Anytime you're dealing with safety of students, they think that'd be an easy sell. I don't know if it's an easy sell or not. I'm just telling you what they, they said to that part. So you have the, the first two options is apply for SBA money, and use the money like that they tell us we need and in our project we have to follow just like we say we're going to follow. We don't want to mess with SBA, we don't want to apply for their money, do it ourselves and find a way to pay for it. The third option to me is not really an option, but it's you have to throw it out there and it's do nothing. I was talking to Mr. Hall today about we have a maintenance budget. How much is your maintenance budget a year? Eighty thousand dollars. And he's almost halfway through it before in September running out of money already. We, we cannot continue just to try to keep the fingers in the dike because the dike's going to break on us one of these days. And what I'm concerned about is one of these mornings we're going to have a big, another, and, I, and I'm not trying to put the scare tactics in any way, it's just the facts of the matter. Is it inevitable that we'll have another flood in this county? It's just the way it is. It's like in August where we've got a camp. We know we're going to get flooded. Okay? If it's, if it's as bad or worse than the others, and this school is not is no longer usable, where do we put the kids? We have no backup plan for them. Where do they go? If we move them, they have a place to go, and obviously they're on the flood, but at least they would have a place to go to school. So I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share this, these topics with you. And I am open to your comments, questions, concerns, and I'm going to take my take notes. If you see me writing it, not out of the writing what you're telling me. So. Yes, ma'am. You had made a comment that the board is not.
why not move the middle school to Hillsborough School and have Marlins Elementary have the middle school? And it would be a K through 8 school down there. Or not a K through 8, 5 through 8 school. You're saying Markville School is a school. Yes. Along with? Along with Mark Mr. Bean, what is I thought I thought very smooth. I mean, you've got two buildings out in the and you have plenty of room at that high school to do the world. And you eliminate two buildings. Well, that was We're all for the main buildings. Well, and you don't have the issues with certification because if people in 7th and 8th grade move to the high school, you're going to have some major issues because your teachers at the high school aren't going to be certified to 7th and 8th. Then you're going to have to do 7th and 8th grade teachers at the high school. Yeah, and that's what they do. And it would be a huge, huge organization. What is the capacity level of Hillsborough? Well, they have eight kids right now, I think, oh, and they have two classrooms. Of course, the classrooms are not full. So, I don't know how many classrooms. Well, I'm wondering if the original capacity, like the hospital's capacity is 700 or something. Yeah, the I, I can't remember how many classrooms are in that building. When Ms. Shreve and I started teaching in the county, Hillsborough was a kindergarten through eighth grade. It was a K eight school. Yeah. And then it was a K Can I add to that about moving the, the kids to the high school? I'd really like to know how the counting is done as far as that goes. Having 300 versus 600 9th and 12th graders is different than having 300 9th and 12th versus 600 or whatever number it is, 7 through 12, because you have to add different classrooms. You're not just adding to the same. And I know when they do counts, like child counts and things like that, it's always just kind of a numbers game. They take all your teachers and divide it by all your students and then say, this is your class size, when in reality it's not. Right. And so I would like to see, before any of that's happening, an, an actual schedule, an actual plan. Here is where everyone is going to go, not just hearing, yes, according to our calculations, everyone will fit, but show me where everybody's going to fit. Because I think that's really the only way you can get the true measure of, of what's going to be in there. And I wanted to also add about moving the uh, middle school to the high school. I think that was done in the past and they were taken out. Um, I'm assuming it didn't work, which is why it was taken out. I don't know. But um, that's been tried before. I, I do think it would be very detrimental to the children that are going up there. And about K through 8, um, at Green Bank, not necessarily working, I think with the addition of an, another administrator, it would. I mean, you are talking about two schools. So to fix that problem is not, why are we putting another school over here that won't work? Why don't we fix our school and the other school by giving us adequate personnel to run it in the way we should run it? At Green Bank, we have to <coughs> our schedule around one PE teacher, and that's where everything comes into that. That, you know, that and many of the administration. Yeah, I just, um, to kind of go along with this, one of the things you said really early on was that um, Whenever the SBA goes and looks at the funding for these schools, one of the first thing they do is they look at our 10-year comprehensive facilities plan. Um, I don't have a copy of it. I, I tried today and I couldn't reach the state board office. But, but I do know that in past plans, certainly um, the, the 2000 community survey that went into it and the preliminary plan that went into the 2010 plan, one of the big points that was made in that was that we needed to keep the separation of elementary, middle, and high school. And so I think that, that of any plan that causes a significant change in that, and I know Green Bank's got this funky little pseudo separation, but it is there and it was, it was accepted for that facility plan. So I just, I, I'm very struck by the fact that, that the proposal is to send to the SBA something that directly contradicts one of the, the primary points of the comprehensive facilities plan. I really think that plan came from the community and if we're going to change it, we really need to get, talk to the whole community and make it that support. I don't 
know if there was an issue or not. That was a temporary staff. Maybe so. Well, it's just temporary because I'm working on it. I'm in the event building. Yes, I'm still loose today with the Fayette County. We couldn't hear what he said. He said turn down. The plan was turned down. Was it turning the SBA to come down? Yeah, the SBA turned down the visual consultant in the high school. Well, since we're talking a lot about how there's no funding and you're trying to convince because of that, can you kind of talk a little bit about the recent audit of the state that we were yeah. I was going to bring up in the superintendent that's a board of county uh, Dr. Mar Rogers spoke to us Thursday and Friday uh, at the bridge board and uh, <coughs> he said, I know look what's on your old mind. The school, the counties that are short changed, they want to know if they're going to get their money. The ones that got too much money, we will take their money back from them. He said, well the answer is the same for both questions. No. He said, we're not going to be giving back the money. We're not going to be uh, cutting good fund money. He said, that's a legislative thing that they have to do. He said, the legislature will make that decision. But uh, it was obvious. I mean, I kind of had a joke when the office said, you know, we've been trying we've been for years, but we just don't have any money up here. <laughs> now, they're trying to be a million dollars short. With a thousand, eleven 